Oh hey! Hold on. Let me just set that set that off to the side right now. I didn't see you there. Let's talk about Hyrule Historia for a second. So, for those of you who are unacquainted, this is Hyrule Historia. It is a book that came out for Zelda's 25th anniversary, around the same time as Skyward Sword, uh, Ocarina of Time 3D, Four Swords Anniversary Edition, you know, all that jazz. Now, for the most part, this is basically just an art book uh, with a manga in the back that is incredibly non-canonical and confused a lot of people. But this isn't the only part of this book that confused a lot of people, uh, because about midway through this book, in fact, let me find it and show you, here it is. About midway through this book is a certain image that I'm sure a lot of you have seen countless times if you've watched Zelda theory videos, if you've watched, you know, facts about Zelda on YouTube at some point, if you've participated in community stuff, you've probably seen that timeline. It's wrong. And it was wrong when it came out. And then they not only made it wrong, they later came out with Hy uh, not Hyrule Encyclopedia, the Legend of Zelda Encyclopedia. And the Legend of Zelda Encyclopedia makes one change, and it's also wrong. So they took a wrong timeline and made it wronger. So basically, I'm here to, number one, explain what it got wrong. Number two, kind of walk through all of the games and build as complete a timeline as I can only using the games themselves. And the number three, throw my own speculation into the ring as to what is the actual timeline according to the games, and not according to a book written by Dark Horse that Nintendo adopted as fact a few years later. So let's get into it. All right, I've had to adjust the camera slightly to fit it all in. But this is really complicated to explain, and it's basically what Hyrule Historia and later the Encyclopedia and the website suggest. The only real difference is that after Hyrule Historia, Oracle of Ages and Seasons get moved after Link's Awakening and are now a different Link in Zelda. This is incorrect, I'll get to why when I get to later in the video. But that's not the main issue, actually. The main issue is Four Swords and Four Swords Adventures and A Link to the Past because these three games happen in that order. Do you see an issue here? Now, if you don't, that's fine. This is a jank setup. So basically the way that the timeline works is Skyward Sword, Minish Cap, Four Swords, Ocarina of Time. These are all different Links and Zeldas. None of them are the same people. Uh, and then Link and Zelda and Ganondorf in Ocarina of Time do some fucky-wucky. They mess everything up. So now there's, there's three outcomes. There aren't three outcomes. I'll get to that again later. I, I don't like this timeline. But according to Nintendo, according to Dark Horse, there are three timelines. In one timeline, Link defeats Ganon but then Zelda feels bad for him and sends him back in time to relive his childhood, so there is no Link in the future, Ganon comes back, and they have to flood Hyrule, and then you get Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks. Then Link comes back in time to relive his childhood, and decides that with this newfound childhood, he will go to the king and be like, hey, I just experienced time travel and Ganon is bad, maybe we should, uh, Get on his uh, get on his case about that. Maybe do something, you know, preemptively. And the king uh, looks at his hand, sees the mark of the Triforce, and goes, "Okay, yeah, no, this is a thing that we should be dealing with. There's no way you can have that mark uh, unless you're telling the truth. So we'll do it." And so they attempt to uh, kill him. It doesn't work. That leads to Twilight Princess. Also, Link uh, from Ocarina of Time goes on another quest. 
like in a different universe. It doesn't matter really to the timeline. It's just sort of here. Uh, and then for some reason, they decided to put Four Swords Adventures over here. We'll get to why I hate this in a minute. This is the other thing that I hate, which is they made a third timeline for no reason, really. So Link dies. This is a game over timeline. No other game has a game over timeline, and this makes me so mad. A Link to the Past happens thousands of years later, hundreds of years later, who cares? Uh, then he either goes on the Oracle game adventures afterwards, or that's a different Link, depending on which timeline you go with. I'll talk about that later, too. And then he goes uh, and has a, a, a dream boat adventure in Link's Awakening, and he... he it's all a dream. Sorry to spoil it for you. Uh, not only has the game been out since the 90s, the remake's been out for like four years at this point, so... It's not even that big of a twist, honestly. Like, Koholin Island is so obviously bizarre that it's really the only explanation. Anyways. Then, uh, like 150 years later, Link Between Worlds happens, for some reason the Triforce is split again, even though it wasn't split at the end of the last couple of games. Don't know why that happened, it just did. Uh, and then he, go then he goes on the Triforce Heroes adventure, the same Link. Uh, and then however long passes, Hyrule has the full Triforce, but then they break it for no reason, and that causes tragedy to happen, and then the... Kingdom just sort of declines for hundreds of years and becomes a shell of its former self, despite being spread out the furthest of any Kingdom of Hyrule we've ever seen. Anyways, uh, Legend of Zelda Adventure of Link. Ganon gets revived and killed again, maybe, or it's a different Ganon, I don't care. The original two games barely fit in the timeline anyways, they're kind of their own thing, and really... Everything else is connected to some degree, but these two are kind of just crowbarred in for, like, they were the first ones, why shouldn't they count? So instead of A Link to the Past being a reboot, which it should have been, these two are just kind of also there. Uh, and then for some reason the timelines merge, maybe? It's never, it's never explained why they would merge, but apparently th they merge at some point. Uh, and then uh, tens of thousands of years later, the newest two games, Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, you know those two. Those two are new. Everyone loves them. And Tears of the Kingdom is actually what got me to make this video, because people kept using the Hyrule Historia timeline as if it was fact. It's not fact. I hate it so much. So, let's get to why this is complete bogus. Literally with just one game. That's all I need is one game to completely destroy this timeline. So you see this game, you see, you see this game, Four Swords Adventures, that was just kind of smacked at the end of this timeline for no reason, even though there was no reason for it to be. It doesn't go there. Because... Four Swords Adventures starts with an opening text crawl. And that opening text crawl says that Four Swords was the same Link in Zelda and happened not too long ago. Not hundreds or thousands of years later, in a different timeline. Not too long ago. So, this is already bad. But then you get into the fact that Four Swords Adventures has a weirdly familiar map. Kind of looks like Link to the Past's map, but it can be. There's that big frozen section in the middle where the swamp should be. Except at the end of the game, the frozen section dethaws and becomes the swamp area. Uh-oh. Hmm. Well, maybe it's just because it's set in Hyrule, right? They're all the same Hyrule, except Four Swords Adventures has the Eastern Palace in it. It has the Desert Temple in the Desert of Mystery. It has the Tower of Hera. It has uh, all these different things that only ever appear in A Link to the Past and A Link Between Worlds. That's weird. Well, it, surely it's just an illusion. It's not really a direct connection, right? Except for the fact that we see the inventors of the medallions 
that first appear in A Link to the Past. So it has to happen before then. And we see the origin of a brand new Ganondorf, not related to the previous one from Ocarina of Time, or the new one from the new two games down here. And when they seal him away, it's in a golden pyramid of light by seven Hylian maidens. Seven Hylian sages used a golden pyramid of light in A Link to the Past's backstory to seal away Ganon. And, like, can you not see the parallels here? This is clearly a retroactive prequel. So, hold on. So this, I have to go here. This would have to, like, I would have to move, like, this entire timeline over here. And, like, at that point, why is Minish Cap up here? This is where the Four Sword gets made. Well, like, wh why is it not, it should be, like, right before here. It's where Vadi comes from. Why would Vadi just, like, not e exist for, like, countless games across countless timelines and then magically reappear in Four Swords? It doesn't make sense. Plus... Minish Cap, Four Swords, Four Swords Adventures, they share the same art style as these three games in this timeline, and they use the same symbols for Hylian as those games. But then again, Hyrule's flooded in this timeline, and not flooded over here. Are you seeing an issue arising? No matter what I do about this string of games, I can't fit it after either of these. We're gonna have to solve this. So, let's do a bit of a time skip while I rearrange this, and I'll talk you through it. Alright, I've reorganized the board. So here's what we can kinda confirm just using stuff that's in-game. So Skyward Sword, I think we can all agree, no matter what game you're playing, Skyward Sword happens first. It's before Hyrule exists, it's shortly after Hylia, the namesake of Hylians, the main people in every single game. It's shortly after she kicks the bucket uh, and becomes immortal. Not a mortal, not immortal. She becomes a mortal. And it's the origin of the Master Sword. Like, it's, it's the origin. It's the origin. I don't think anybody's going to argue this. No matter what game you're playing, this game comes first. It, like, they did so much work to make sure that this is the start of the timeline. In fact, it came out the same year that they tried to cobble together a really bad timeline, so, you know. Next up on our list, Ocarina of Time. So here's what we know about what happens in sort of the backstory of Hyrule, right? Hyrule gets founded, and the Triforce, which is whole and on the surface at the end of this game, gets put away in the Sacred Realm, uh, with the Master Sword and the Three Sacred Stones as the key, right? Now, at some point, whether it's before Hyrule's founding, after Hyrule's founding, however long it is, we don't know. But we know that at some point, people find out about the Sacred Realm, and they want that power for themselves. So, a whole bunch of people scramble to try and get the Triforce, and a war breaks out. This leads to the uh, the tribe that was described in Twilight Princess getting sealed in their little dimension, the Twilight Dimension, which is brought up in Twilight Princess. Those are the Twilight. The, the Twily? The Twili? The Twili! I don't know how to pronounce it, and I don't really care. So, that happens. There's a whole bunch of wars, and that turns into the Prolonged Wars. And then the prolonged wars sort of culminate in the Hyrulean Civil War, where everybody is fighting each other, despite the fact that they have somewhat unified. And nobody is quite sure why they were fighting to begin with. Because by the time Ocarina of Time starts, the only people who really know about the Triforce is essentially three parties. The Hyrulean royal family, so Zelda, her dad, presumably her mom... Ganondorf, who is after it, and Kotake and Kome, who raised Ganondorf and who are over 400 years old, so of course they know how the conflict started. They were probably involved in the earliest of conflicts. And they were definitely born way after Skyward Sword. There are no Gerudo 
in Skyward Sword. Those come later. They, I guess they must be a branch of Hylians or something. I don't know. So Ocarina of Time happens. And the thing that I actually mentioned earlier is still true. You know, Link defeats Ganondorf. Zelda sends him back in time. There's no hero. They have to flood Hyrule. You know, Wind Waker happens. He goes on the Phantom Hourglass adventure. They have to found, found Hyrule in a different location that's still above water, which leads to spirit tracks a hundred years later. But then, at the end of Ocarina of Time, at the end end of Ocarina of Time, when Link goes to confront Zelda, he has the Triforce on the back of his hand. He should not have that. He traveled back in time to before he even met Zelda. So Link going back in time, in the way that Zelda sent him back in time, he took the mark of the Triforce with him, the mark of the Triforce of Courage specifically. Link going back in time split the Triforce, causing the divine prank that was never explained in Twilight Princess, because they didn't need to explain it. Ocarina of Time showed it happening. Anyways, Link uh, leaves... And, and goes on a quest uh, in another dimension, and then goes home, grows up, becomes a soldier, uh, gets, gets real sad that he hasn't passed down his knowledge, and becomes a ghost. And then the ghost teaches Twilight Princess Link. And then Twilight Princess Link uh, kills Ganon, and so does Wind Waker Link. They, they both kill Ganondorf. He's dead. He's permadead. Both times. He does not come back. Now, as for the two newest games, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, I don't really know where to put these. Um, they kind of after Skyward Sword and after Ocarina of Time, and those are the only two things I can say for now. We'll get to that. So then we move on to all the 2D games, um, or I suppose the 2D games with the exception of Fan Mario Glass and Spirit Tracks, but those are sort of grandfathered in as 3D games because they're like a direct and indirect sequel to Wind Waker. So. But the 2D games, we start with Minish Cap. And this all happens sometime after Skyward Sword, obviously. We start with Minish Cap. Uh, body starts existing. The Four Sword starts existing. That's all we really need to know from that game. There's some weird oddities in that game. Like, I have no idea what the Light Force is meant to be. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the timeline. So, at some point after Minish Cap, Vadi undies and also is really horny i guess because he just goes around kidnapping women instead of trying to get more powerful i have no idea what's going on with this version of vadi but like he gets his butt kicked by a hero that we never meet and then however long later uh this link and zelda have to beat him back into submission again because he breaks out of the four sword and then they have to seal him back in it again uh and not long after that, new Ganondorf, uh, he uses Vadi as a distraction, as well as, like, Dark Link as a distraction, to basically steal ancient artifacts to amass power, uh, turn into a big giant blue pig guy wielding a trident, uh, and then we fight him, and we seal him away. Unfortunately, at some point, he does break out, uh, which does break the Four Sword into four, uh, as we see in the GBA port of A Link to the Past. Now, I'm, I'm guessing that somehow the Four Sword Sanctuary was either sent to the Dark World or is in the Dark World somehow, because... The Four Sword and Ganondorf end up in the Dark World, and there they find the Triforce Oops. Uh, another war breaks out because people find out about the Triforce, but yeah, Ganon is already there, and he almost conquers everything until the descendants of these maidens, um, like, seal away the Dark World. Uh, but then he tries to break out again in A Link to the Past, and we kill him and take the full Triforce from him and wish that... Uh, all of his BS uh, didn't ruin everybody's lives, and the wish is granted. So the most contentious part is the next part, which is the Oracle games. Now, the Oracle games, depending on who you ask, are either very obviously an interquel between A Link to the Past and Link's Awakening, which are very obviously connected, or they're very clearly a different Link in Zelda. And here's the reason why. At the end of this game, at the beginning of this game, first of all, at the beginning of this game, 
Uh, the Triforce is full and in Hyrule Castle, which means it's after A Link to the Past. That much is pretty much guaranteed. And at the end of the game, you leave Hyrule on a boat that uses almost exactly the same sprite as the sprite from the boat that you're on at the start of Link's Awakening, but with the sails unfurled instead of furled. But also in these two games, you meet Zelda. And Zelda, you save her from like a cave. And when you save her, she's like, you're Link, right? Yeah, I knew it from first sight. So some people interpret that as she's meeting you for the first time. Other people interpret it as it was dark and she wasn't sure it was you. Honestly, I have no idea, but there is an old interview in a magazine from around 2001-ish, uh, where the developers do say that they intended it to go between these two games. So my interpretation is either A, she couldn't see you very well in the dark, or B, she genuinely can't quite remember you, either because it's been a number of years, uh, or because the wish at the end of Link to the Past maybe did some screwy things with people's memory of the previous version of events. Who knows, honestly. Anyways, you uh, fight Twin Rova, by the way. Well, you don't fight her. They sacrifice themselves. Uh, Kotaka and Kome are alive. That's weird. That should only be true here. But as we previously see established, these three games have a lot of ties to these ones? We'll get back to that. So, Twin Rova sacrifices themselves at the end of this, and then you uh, fight a resurrected Ganon who is mindless. Uh, moving on to A Link Between Worlds, at some point after the after this stuff, the Triforce gets split on purpose, but that just gives Ganon a piece of the Triforce. I don't know why they did that. That was very dumb of them. Anyways, uh, a villain from another dimension steals Ganon's body, you kill him, uh, and then you reunite the Triforce and use that Triforce to fix the other dimension so they're not evil anymore. It's great. Uh, and then Link goes off on Triforce Heroes Adventure. I was always, like, kind of, like, weirded out by that, like, position on the timeline, but apparently one of the shopkeeps in Triforce Heroes is from A Link Between Worlds, and he recognizes you. Or at least vaguely recognizes you. So... It is the same Link, it's just a really weird game that I, I don't know why it's in the timeline. It's very weird. It's very weird. Anyways, then uh, all the stuff I mentioned earlier happens. You know, Legend of Zelda Adventure of Link, Tragedy of Princess Zelda the First. Who cares? These games honestly don't really belong in the timeline all that much. They're just kind of grandfathered in. And this is the three ish timelines that I can build. Skyward Sword's at the start of all of them. Remember that. And Ocarina of Time's Summer before this. This is the best, like, timelines that I can build without using a little bit of guesswork. Because, as mentioned, this timeline has references to both splits. And this clearly happens after the split because Ocarina gets referenced both by the Gyarado and the Zora. So, what are we going to do about this? I would suggest putting this stuff before Ocarina and after Skyward Sword, but that doesn't make any sense because, again, this contains references to these two timelines. I would suggest putting all this in the child timeline, but, again, there are references to adult timeline stuff. Uh, for example, Adventure of Link has towns that are named after characters that become sages, in this timeline, but not this one. And then th these two games have to happen after this, right? But then they take place in a Hyrule that isn't flooded? But this Hyrule should be perma-flooded. That was literally a wish made on the Triforce, is to flood Hyrule permanently. Wash it away beneath the waves. And yet... It's back? Something screwy is going on here. And I think maybe I can explain it. Let me skip ahead, I'll rearrange this, and I'll explain where I'm going with this. Alright, I've had to move the, um, I've had to move the camera yet again, because this is getting very long. Here's the best I could come up with. I know there's an alternative theory out there where there's a split from Minish Cap, because there's a 
really elaborate game over screen where instead of just saying game over, it has Vadi say, haha, I won, and then it says game over. But like, that's almost as dissatisfying as the downfall timeline, and I hope people who believe that theory understand that. For a lot of people, that's not a good answer. Even though it is shown in game, it is still a game over screen. Nobody likes a what if scenario, especially when the what if scenario is, what if you were bad at the game? Anyways, so my best guess is you have this section, and then for some reason, I don't know why, the timelines merge. Then all those 2D games happen I talked about, Hyrule gets refounded, uh, we'll talk about that in a second, and then the two newest games. Now, Hyrule does kind of have to be refounded for the two newest games, because we get shown the founding of Hyrule in Tears of the Kingdom. Spoilers, by the way. And the Rito are already there, that can't be the case. The Gerudo have pointed ears, which they shouldn't have if it's way back here, or even here. And... There's a brand new Ganondorf, and there has not been a male Gerudo born since that Ganondorf. Which means all these other Ganondorfs have to be before the founding of the Hyrule we know from the two newest games. There really isn't another way to to go about this. By the way, if this is a little blown out and blurry, uh, I'll do maybe like a camera pan across this version of the timeline so that you know like what's up. But this is it. This is the best I can do with the material that this has given me. This is the best I could do. If you don't like it, you don't have to, but fact remains, Hyrule Historia was wrong, because Four Swords Adventures exists, and you should play it, it's pretty good. It has a single player mode that's actually not bad. A lot of people think that you need uh, all this different, like, oh, you need the link cables, and you need the Game Boys, and you- No. You can play it single player, it's actually pretty good single player. 